Hey there everyone, this is a tutorial on Soka Toa or right triangle trigonometry and how to use it. This is uh, the first of four episodes uh, in which you'll see an introduction to Soka Toa and what kind of problems it solves. Uh, this is Mr. Bourne and I'm a math teacher in Minnesota. Okay, if you're already good on the intro of what Soka Toa is and what it does, you can skip on ahead to episode two, three, or four, in which uh, I will do some examples of how to use the sine and inverse of sine, cosine, inverse of cosine, and tangent and inverse of tangent. So you get the whole shoot and match. Okay, in this particular episode, this is episode one, you'll learn what problems you can solve, how to properly set your calculator to the degrees mode, and verify it with a little test. And uh, last, you'll learn a little bit of vocabulary because you got to know what uh, we're talking about before you um, know what it's uh, what it is. Okay, so real quick, Sokatoa. It's a mnemonic, which is which is just a fancy word for um, a mental little trick that you can use in your brain to remember um, what goes where. Um, now, here's how it works. So is S O H. And it's spelled kind of like it sounds, so, and the O stands for opposite, the H is hypotenuse, and this is something that you use with sine. So here it is. The sine of an angle A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. I'm abbreviating here. So you got your opposite and your hypotenuse right here. So that's what SO stands for. Ka is cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. So you got your cosine of your angle and that's a ratio of the adjacent side of a triangle over the hypotenuse. And if you're already feeling lost, don't worry. Don't worry that you don't know what adjacent means. You'll see it in just a minute here. And last one is TOA, which is tangent. Whoops. Tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite adjacent, OA, TOA. Okay, now two quick things here before we uh, get started on to uh, answering the question of what kind of problems can you solve. Um, don't be intimidated by all of the symbols. I mean, here we've got a triangle and it's it's got, you know, all these symbols, A, B, and C. It's dressed up like a Christmas tree. There's lots of symbols everywhere. But don't get hung up on that, okay? What's important is knowing the relationship of like what's across from an angle and knowing which side of a triangle is the hypotenuse and um, knowing what, what side is the adjacent side relative to an angle. Now sometimes, um, like in European countries and, well, I don't know what other countries, but uh, they'll use Greek letters for referring to the vertices of triangles and they will they'll ask you a question that's real intimidating like this like what's the angle theta and they'll bring out this O with a little line in the middle of it and that's a Greek letter now like I said don't get hung up in symbols here because it just because it's Greek letters it does not make it any easier or any harder than um, what it needs to be it's just a different way of referring to different pieces of a triangle and if they say you know find angle X I mean don't worry about it it's it's just an unknown. They're just asking for, you know, something to be put proper in here, a proper letter or number. Okay, so moving on. Second thing, um, this will not work with other kinds of triangles, as in if it's not a right triangle, eh, eh, like that, and if like this middle one, that's not a right triangle. Uh, we can't use this. I mean, sine, cosine, and tangent, they do work with other kinds of triangles but we are specifically doing right triangle trigonometry and that means that we need to have this little box symbol someplace in the triangle at some point so um, that's kinda crucial you gotta have that right there 
If it's not a right triangle, we're not doing this Sokatoa stuff. All right, so here's the kind of problems that uh, you would use Sokatoa for. For instance, if you were given the side lengths of a triangle, like, check it out, you know, you got three centimeters and four centimeters, let's just say, and here's the all-important little symbol, meaning it's a right triangle, then uh, you can answer questions like this. You can find out what the angle measure is for this little you know, spot right here. Um, so that's one of the applications. Another application is where you could be given the angle measure and one of the sides and you can use this to figure out an unknown side. So that's really handy. All right. Now, how to properly set your calculator. Um, if you've got a TI-83 plus or a TI-84 plus, you're in luck. Now, a lot of times, <laughs> whenever you're going to start on a problem, it's it seems to be set to the opposite um, angle mode as what you need it to be. Now, for all of these examples, I'm going to be doing these in degrees. And when you get the calculator from the factory or when it's reset to its default settings, you'll see that uh, the angle measure will be in radians. And uh, radians are not going to be what we use today. I mean, they're perfectly fine. There's nothing bad about radians. But we're going to be using degrees. And when we get an answer, we want to express it in degrees. Now, if you've got a TI-83+, plus, like one of these guys right here, your setting screen looks pretty much identical. It's just that... Uh, the, the type face of the, the letters is just a little bit bigger, but it's the same thing. Okay, so here we're going to uh, see how to set your TI-84 Plus to degrees mode and to test it. Okay, so here's the TI-84 Plus. Press the key in the upper part of the keypad that has the word mode on it. One press of it and you'll be brought up to the mode screen. There's lots of settings here. The third line down has two choices, radian and degree. And if it's uh, got radian that's um, highlighted here, it's blackened in the back, then um, press the right arrow key over once and then press the enter key in the lower left, I'm sorry, the lower right part of your keypad so that degree is now highlighted and uh, that's all there is to it. Pressing the second key followed by the mode key will exit you out of the mode and now your mode is degrees. Now, A fast way to check just to make sure is to type in sign 90. If it's a 1 it's in degrees mode and you're good to go. And right there I went super fast and I changed it into radians mode so you know you're in radians mode if you put in sign 90 and you get this weird decimal here. That means radians. So sine 90 equals 1, degrees mode, and you're good to go. Okay, so you've got your calculator all set up, and you know what kind of problems you can do. Um, now with so ka toa, you need to know a few things about what's the opposite, what's the adjacent, and what the hypotenuse is. So let's just take a triangle like this, and let's just kind of get rid of all these little symbols here. We don't need these. That's cluttering things up. Okay, now here's my hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the longest uh, side or longest edge of a right triangle. And it is always um, on the far side of your right angle. So it's not too, too difficult to spot there. That's always the hypotenuse. It never changes. So here's what does change. Let's say that you were told that um, well, let's see, how should I do it? Let's say that you were told that the angle measure inside this little angle right there was 53.1301 degrees. Well, um, figuring this out, that's where the angle is. Now we have to determine which triangle sides are what. Since this triangle side is right next to the degree that we're given, this angle that we're given, and the hypotenuse never changes, it always is there, this is the adjacent, so it's just to the side. Now, far opposite of the angle in question, 
is the opposite side. So you see, we're not so concerned with A, B, C, uh, you know, naming sides with those kinds of labels, but in relation to what, where the angle is that we're talking about, there's two locations, right? So if we're talking about up here, and there's our angle, the opposite side is over here, it's opposite, the furthest from, and the adjacent is the triangle leg that is right next to it that's not the hypotenuse. Okay, now this one might be a little bit weird, but check this out. Let's put these back and get rid of that little thing. Okay, now suppose, just suppose that down here we were given an angle measure. So that's our angle that we're given. Now the opposite is this guy and our adjacent side is here. Adjacent is right next to the angle measure and it's not the one that's right next to it, that's the hypotenuse. The opposite side of the triangle is the furthest from the angle. Opposite side. So now you know what opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse are in a right triangle. So it can, it can change depending on which of the two unknown angles we're talking about. All right, well that's the end of episode one. Uh, pick up episode two and view it to see some examples of sine, episode three to see some examples of cosine, and episode four to see some examples of tangent.